welcome to Juniper's Contrail product demo series. This demo showcases Contrail as a powerful platform that can dynamically provision content delivery network service to significantly improve the user experience for video streaming and large file downloads inside of enterprise VPNs. See, enterprises are increasingly leveraging multimedia and mobility technologies to communicate, educate, and share content. Today's businesses are converting a lot of paper manuals into multimedia presentations and pushing out large size software updates for Windows, Macs, tablets, smartphones, etc., all from their corporate data centers. So the employees receive updates on their smartphone and tablet apps through Wi Fi, and these updates tend to be very big, like multi megabyte in size. In addition, Large business-critical internal data files may need to move between branches and the corporate headquarters. With security and regulatory compliance concerns, enterprises typically want to confine internal content within the boundary of their own VPN. Almost invariably, though, the content delivery over the WAN is also challenging due to a bandwidth constraint. This is even more pronounced, of course, when it comes to streaming video delivery. When end users experience jitter and pauses, that significantly degrades their viewing experience. To solve the problem, some enterprises resort to Public Content Delivery Network, or CDN, offerings that cache content at locations near their offices. Amazon CloudFront is one of the most popular cloud CDN offerings. The challenge with this solution is that business-critical content needs to traverse outside of the VPN, resulting in potential security risks and frequent moves of large files to a public cloud through the internet where there's no service level agreement or SLA guarantee. Juniper solves this enterprise content delivery challenge by running Juno's Content Encore caching and content delivery service on Contrail, a platform for network virtualization, orchestration, and dynamic service delivery. Together, they enable a virtual private CDN service inside enterprise VPNs so that content can be cached and delivered without getting out to the unsecured internet. There's significant benefits to provisioning CDN service on top of Contrail. For one, leveraging network function virtualization or NFV, service providers and enterprises can quickly deploy services on demand and scale services up and down on existing compute and network infrastructure in a cost-efficient way. Two, by spinning up a private virtual CDN service instance inside an enterprise VPN, this solution eliminates potential enterprise security and regulatory compliance risks. And three, this solution enhances user experience when they consume enterprise internal content. In this demo, we'll see how CDN service can be dynamically provisioned through Contrail and configured using Amazon CloudFront APIs to facilitate enterprise internal content delivery. Contrail and Juno's Content Encore do not restrict where the service can be deployed. CDN service can be offered as a value-added service by a network service provider, as we've shown through the Contrail NFV demo, or provisioned by the enterprise themselves in their own private cloud. As a baseline, let me show you what an enterprise user experiences when trying to stream a large internal video inside of the VPN without any CDN service. As you can see, there are long and frequent pauses and jitter during the video streaming. Next, I'm going to use the OpenStack user interface to instantiate a virtual CDN service instance to enhance the video and content delivery. As you can imagine, caching is a storage-intensive service, and the amount of storage space that a virtual machine instance has by default may not be sufficient. We can create a volume from the underlying OpenStack storage component as a supplement storage for our CDN service instance. Then when I spawn the instance itself 
In addition to specifying the management network, I can attach the volume to it. I click on the Volume Options tab and select Boot from Volume. Then, put in the name of the volume I just created with a device name slash dev slash VDB. In addition to seeing the volume being attached to my CDN Service 1 instance in OpenStack, I can also log on to the CDN Service instance and verify that the service recognizes the additional storage volume and is using it. Because this is a dedicated virtual CDN service instance for my business, I can provision it based on my infrastructure design through Amazon's prevalent CloudFront API. There are multiple ways I can provision the CDN service. The first is through Juniper's homegrown Firefox plugin, a graphical UI configuration tool. I just fill in a few blanks without the need to understand the syntax of the CloudFront API. I can verify that the configuration went through using Juno's Content Encore's CLI, and now the CDN service acts as a proxy of Origin 1 as one of the content sources. I can also issue a set of raw API calls by filling in the XML scripts and send them through an HTTP post so you can actually see the Juno's Content Encore CDN service can indeed be provisioned by CloudFront APIs. Here, two more content sources have been added. But the most practical and efficient way is to provision the CDN service through an extension of Yuka tools. Yuka tools are command line tools for interacting with AWS and other AWS compatible web services such as Eucalyptus and OpenStack. This time, I've added Origin 3 to the content source list. Here I want you to see real quick the config file that I used for the Yuka Tools command. Now that I properly configured my CDN service, let's try to watch that same video again and see if you can notice the difference. No more long pauses, no more jitter, the video looks much smoother. The cloud orchestration platform, in this case OpenStack, may decide to live migrate a virtual machine from one physical server to another to rebalance workloads or maintain high availability. Let's see the end user experience when such a live migration happens on the CDN service instance. While my video is playing, I issue an OpenStack Nova command to perform the live migration as you can see. While the migration is in progress, the caching stopped, but the video continues to play from what's already been cached with no interruption. If the migration takes a short enough time as usual, the caching will restart with the CDN service on the new physical server and the video streaming will just continue and the viewer will never know. Today's enterprises are increasingly using cloud storage, such as Amazon S3. As a last step, I want to show you the user experience enhancements with Juno's Content Encore CDN service running on Contrail when consuming content stored in Amazon S3. I currently have three files stored in my S3 account that I plan to share internally. I have also configured the CDN service to recognize the Amazon S3 as a content source.
If I simply try to download a file from Amazon S3 without any caching, you can see it takes a while, say 20 odd seconds. If I use my CDN service as a content proxy, then the first time it's a bit slow, taking about 2.1 seconds to get the same file. Subsequently, when the same file is requested again, it's already in the cache and we can get it almost instantly in 0.03 seconds. If we try this on another bigger file, we would see the same remarkable user experience improvement. Now, if we inspect our CDN cache, there are two cache entries for each of these two files, one in the RAM and one on the hard disk. And that concludes today's demo of dynamic CDN service running on Juniper Networks Contrail.